Okay, let's get started. Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. In this video, I am going to demonstrate doing a sensor analysis using SharpCap uh, Pro. And I think you can also do it in the free version of SharpCap as well. And uh, I, the reason I'm doing it, and you may want to do it uh, for various reasons, is that I am a Nina user, and one of the plugins available in Nina is uh, Nighttime Imaging and Astronomy, also known as AKA Nina, is the exposure calculator. And um, it has the ability to leverage the sharp cap sensor analysis data. And I already did it for the ASI 533 uh, Pro, um, MC Pro, my color one-shot camera, the new camera. And now I'm going to do it for the ASI uh, 294 MM Pro. But as you see here, I have um, a couple of files available in two different uh, spaces, the RAW 16 and the RAW 8. Um, again, I don't know if you saw my video, I ordered a new mount, I have it right next to me, I have turned it on, it works, um, which is good, want to make sure it wasn't dead on arrival, but I'm going to focus a lot on guiding this year, and I personally think a part of guiding is exposure length. You know, how long do you really need to go on an exposure before you start getting diminishing returns? where your chances of a sub being ruined by something flying through it that your image uh, image processing software can't remove. You know, so um, I want to understand what is my optimal exposure. And I, you know, I'm still a beginner and some people say beginners shouldn't focus on uh, optimal exposure and those type of things. But um, I have a different point of view. I think setting the correct exposure is very important because it's how we get to maximizing the signal uh, and reducing uh, the noise. So, all right. Um, so here we are in sharp cap. I have uh, down here, maybe this camera will pick it up. Uh, here's my ASI 294MM Pro. I've got it powered up. I've got it connected via USB to my imaging laptop. So uh, we'll just do a rescan for cameras and then we'll see what it sees. Uh, okay, it sees the ASI 294 Pro. So we're going to select that. And now we're going to go into uh, tools and we're going to select uh, sensor analysis. Now over here uh, there's mono 8 and mono 16. I'm going to start with the 16, but I'm going to come back and do mono 8. In my reading of the documentation, much that I did like raw 8 and raw 16 for the ASI 533MC Pro one-shot color camera, uh, I'm going to do both the mono 16 and the mono 8 for this camera. And um, what I have down here, and maybe you see it from this camera, is I have a Samsung tablet with a uh, LM, you know, flashlight app on it where you can set the sensitivity and then I'm using a sheet of paper uh, to further reduce the intensity of the light. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at down in this area down here and it's going to let us know if, if I've got too much light or uh, not enough light, I guess. Kind of like, you know, if you've done flats before, getting the light uh, intensity correct for your flats. So, um, now, the other thing is I'm going to skip binning measurements. There is a uh, box here that you could check. I don't really know what that means. I don't know what the nuances uh, mean. But again, what, what I enjoy is exploring. And so I like to run through uh, not necessarily reading the manual the first time, uh, especially on non-critical stuff. Uh, and then uh, run through the process and then dig into the manual and see what fine-tuning I need to do. So we're going to start here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lens cap off uh, the end of the camera and I'm going to put it on the light panel and then I'm going to hit start. Uh, 
So to me, it looks like it's making flats, but, um, okay, it says, look for the histogram that is narrow and has a single peak. Select an, an area at least uh, 100 pixels on a side. Uh, so I think it's I think it's okay. It's around 65. So we're going to proceed. And what we're going to get is we're going to get a uh, we should get a file that gets created. But what we'll visually see here is we'll see a graph on linearity of the sensor and then uh, some additional information in a table form. And um, I hope it's okay uh, if I offend anyone by having a little bit of wine. You know, it's, uh, I can't be outside imaging anything, so I'm just having a little bit of red wine. I don't know if that's uh, frowned upon in the astronomical in, uh, imaging community or not, but uh, I'm taking a chance here. So, you know, I really think Exposure length is important to guiding error in a sense. And of course, seeing is what none of us can really defeat, right? So seeing plays a big role in, um, clearly in my mind, in uh, guiding. Um, you know, if, if the seeing's not real good and your guide star is moving around a lot, uh, you know, that has implications. And, and this is what I really want to understand this year. And I already know that my guide scope uh, is not necessarily in the best focus. Uh, I've been reluctant to touch that because it's been guiding fairly well and I don't want to like, you know, mess anything up. But um, I am going to be trying to fine tune my uh, guiding scope this, uh, uh, this year as well. So, all right, so we're starting to get some of the data displayed uh, on the screen. Now, my understanding is, is I have SharpCap Pro, costs eighteen dollars US. Um, I don't, I never mind paying for software if it provides value. And everything I heard about SharpCap, it really can provide you a, a lot of value. So I went ahead and purchased the Pro license. Um, what I'm not sure of is the uh, data that will be displayed here. I think you need the Pro and. In, or, in order to be able to export it into like another document. So I don't know. And the other thing I want to try out with uh, uh, SharpCap Pro is it has a smart histogram. Again, that's part of setting the optimal uh, exposure, as I understand it. But I first want to work with the plugin in Nina. I am really, you know, I love Nina. <laughs> You know, but I, I think we all get attached to whatever software we're using. Uh, and I think part of that happens as we become more familiar uh, with it. Um, but I'm, I'm really, now that I'm starting to explore the plugins, and, you know, I did that video on the uh, plugin for Nina, the three point polar alignment. Um, based upon what I saw there and some of the comments I got from people, which I really appreciate to that video. You know, I may just ditch my pole master uh, camera. And in particular with the new mount now, uh, I'm probably not even going to transfer the uh, pole master over to this mount. I will just use uh, the Nina three point polar alignment, or I'm going to check out the Sharp Cap uh, polar alignment tool. Uh, but I think that's going to be the way I'm going to go with the new mount. Um, at least that's my thoughts. And a thing about the new mount, um, yeah, I'm hoping for reduced guiding error. Uh, yeah, there are some instructions on how to make some adjustments mechanically to the uh, Skywatcher EQ6R mount, and I'll probably do that after a while. The main reason I got the mount, though, is to uh, be able to handle a heavier payload and so in my future vision, looking down the roadmap, you know, maybe there's a Celestron uh, Edge 8 HD or something, something with a lot more focal length. And then, uh, you know, so that's the primary reason. But I'm also hoping to be able to tune this to get, uh, minimize some of the, uh, the guiding error. Okay, cover the sensor for darks. Okay, we're going to do that. 
we got it covered I'll put it over here and then I'll hit proceed I mean you know I think what the challenge for all of us is what is the seeing uh, when we're imaging and you know it's just gonna play a role and I think in how much error we might be able to get out uh, on a given night so if you're a user of shot cap if you have used this tool to do your uh, sensor analysis uh, I'd appreciate it if you make some comments around it what your thoughts are uh, if there's another way to do this uh, you know uh, please feel free to comment it's comments and questions that really help drive the channel and you know other beginners that come to uh, the channel and see this video they hopefully are reading the comments because there's a lot of knowledge nuggets there that have been at least very helpful to me so um, and we're gonna have rain tomorrow and I shouldn't whine because I know many people are in parts of the world where uh, the weather is not the best or you know there's no clear skies uh, but I want to get this uh, out and uh, up and, uh, you know, I think I'll pit, I can see the pinwheel galaxy from my backyard. So just to put some time on uh, the mount uh, and do a PhD2 uh, calibration, you know, I'm, I'm hoping for some good weather. And uh, again, to just put more time on the mount and uh, start to get... Uh, familiar with it a little bit more and if you have made mechanical adjustments to your uh, EQ6 uh, dash R mount uh, uh, please call that out in the comments as well and if you can point me to what document you may have used to make those adjustments and uh, what the results were of those adjustments that would be uh, that would be appreciated and now that I have this mount um, I can start to do some adjustments on my uh, HEQ5 mount. I mean, it was a fantastic mount, still a great mount. It was uh, the right mount for my Xenostar Z61 Mod 2. Um, you know, all total with electric, uh, you know, the uh, electronic uh, autofocuser and the power uh, pocket ba uh, pocket power box advance and filter wheel and camera and everything it was about uh, nine pounds eight ounces uh, the HEQ5 can handle that quite well um, I just was not sure that it could handle a uh, Celestron uh, uh, Edge 8 HD if that's the direction I, I go in you know I'm thinking maybe you know maybe refractors are heavy um, so maybe it's time to go to uh, something like the Celestron. So we'll see. That'll be later in the year. Um, and uh, But I would like to have more focal length for trying my hand at galaxies uh, come galaxy season and see what, what are the challenges in trying to image galaxies at longer uh, focal lengths. Um, clearly, you know, if you go to Cloudy Nights, uh, they're going to tell you that your mount is is an important uh, part of the process, and you know I totally uh, totally agree with that. Yeah, but the uh, Skywatcher uh, HEQ5 has been a good mount for me, and um, I'm very pleased I made that decision uh, initially uh, to go in that direction. But there again, there's Ioptron. There's a lot of different, uh, you know. A lot of different options so uh, I'm not necessarily recommending uh, Skywatcher but uh, I've been very pleased with what it's uh, been producing for me so all right so over here um, we do have a histogram uh, with the ASI 533 MC Pro we would have saw the individual color channels displayed here um, and then we have some uh, some information around uh, exposure in milliseconds that this uh, app is using right now. And clearly here you see that it's a 46 megapixel camera, and you see the resolution is 8 
8288 by 5644. So, okay. Uncover the sensor for gain measurements. You just do this for a second, and then once it turns white, you put it down. And. Oh, I expect it to hit proceed. So I will say one thing about the uh, EQ6-R, it, uh, good thing that I have two uh, Jackery power stations, um, because I needed a second 12-volt uh, that could deliver at least 4 amps uh, to power the mount. And it was seamless, you know, uh, using Nina. Um, Nina immediately recognized the HEQ6 um, without me really having to do anything. Uh, so that was uh, great. I know some people use the hand controller, but uh, I prefer not to do that. I think we're getting close. So maybe that's a question. Uh, how do you determine your optimal uh, exposure time? Okay, so this is what we were looking for. Um, so I can copy this data now. I think if you don't have the pro version, you can't do it. But what my expectation is, is that it's created a file. And so let's see <clears throat> what it's... <clears throat> what it's created and again I think um, sharp cap uh, sensor library is it here no that's not it oh I know so it's in SharpCap sensor characteristics. So I need to go into, okay. So let's uh, try and find it this way. Okay, I need roaming. Roaming, we're in roaming, and then we need sharp cap. Sensor characteristics. Okay, so it has created a JSON file, and we'll take a quick look at it. And so, you know, it's my expectation that this is the information that the uh, exposure calculator plugin for Nina is going to uh, use and then um, as I indicated here's the two for the uh, ASI 533 so what I'll do is I'll run uh, a second pass uh, on the uh, I guess it's the mono 8 uh, let me bring that back up yeah I'll run one for uh, Mono 8. And so uh, I'll do a follow up. This is how to do a sensor analysis in SharpCap. And again, I think you can, uh, you don't have to buy the pro version necessarily, although I can't uh, say that 100%. Uh, you know, just much like the uh, charts on the uh, CWO site, uh, you know, you'll find something the read noise versus the gain setting. So again, this helps us get to the correct gain. I think the default gain uh, is uh, 
120 on the ASI 294 and as someone pointed out to me since I was using the wrong gain it's uh, I think 100 for the ASI uh, 533 but um, you know it's an easy tool to use and um, you know I'm looking forward to uh, having that data available to then be able to evaluate what is this uh, exposure calculator providing as far as value to me uh, when I start imaging, which I think is going to be towards the uh, end of April the next time. So, so anyway, um, how to do a sensor analysis using SharpCap. I use SharpCap Pro and uh, might be something you want to look into. Um, and um, other than that, uh, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, really appreciate everyone who ch uh, drops into the channel, and, and in particular those that uh, hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, I'm really excited this year. I got a lot of stuff going on, the new mount. I'm going to be working on guiding error. I'm going to be working on... Uh, uh, getting to the optimal exposure so if any of that information is of interest to you maybe you want to hit the notification bell so when new videos come out uh, you're aware of it but uh, and then really the excitement is as we get closer to the uh, nebula season uh, to start imaging with the ASI 533 uh, MC Pro and um, and we'll see how it goes alright uh, other than that like, share, and subscribe. Comments, questions are always appreciated. They help drive the channel. See you next time.